Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. I know we haven't done one of these in a while, but hey, it's a good time to be back. All right, so today our podcast is going to be about breaking. Specifically, it's going to be about B girls. And who better to talk about B girls than an actual B girl? So our guest today is no stranger. In fact, we started this uh, small podcast together. So yeah, welcome back, Zell. Hi, it's good to be back. So yeah, we haven't done this in a while, so it's uh, nice to hear from you again. Yeah. So yeah, let's start. All right, tell tell us about yourself. Let's re get reacquainted with uh, Zell, and or should I say, B girl Zell? Yes. Hi everyone. My name is Zell. Before this, I used to do B girling in back in 2007 until 2011, and now I'm actively involved in. Uh, advocacy. First one is uh, education advocacy and the other one is more on youth political participation. Yeah, so that's a brief introduction about me, what I did before and what I'm doing now. So tell us, uh, why why did you start breaking? Okay, why did I start breaking is because I saw a few of my friends and that friend was you. Okay, uh, you guys were, I think if I remember correctly, you guys were practicing and then b-boying was the in thing back then, back in 2007. And the, my male friends, they started to get involved in b-boying. So I wanted to try because it looked fun and I wanted to challenge myself. And it was also because I was a bit of a tomboy. I joined basketball, I joined taekwondo. Taekwondo, uh, so after that I wanted to participate in another male-dominated activity, which was b-boying. And how I get to uh, be involved in that activity was uh, because of pure influence. Yeah, it was uh, one of the people was Yula, and from that point uh, we started to train. And then we, it's like almost a weekly routine to have training sessions. That's how I started. So are you still actively dancing these days? I, I don't know whether this is fortunate or unfortunate, but no, I'm not actively dancing. I don't dance anymore, but I still, I still occasionally watch YouTube videos on Bigger Link. And also if there are events, I would like to watch as an audience. Yeah. So for those of you who are listening, uh, Zell used to be a B-girl in KK from 2007 to, to 2011. We started with a Zodiac crew and then eventually changed into Overton 360. Yeah, and uh, Zell was uh, one of the, the pioneers of the KK B-girl scene. Could you share more of your experience on what it was like to be a B-girl uh, when you were breaking? Okay, I will break this down into the good experience and the bad experience. So I'm going to start off with the good experience. So the first one is one of the good feelings that I had was I get to challenge myself because the activities were, of course, difficult. And also because it's, it was, it's a male dominated activity. So I wanted to, you know, just to challenge the status quo. Uh, another thing is I get to uh, represent girls. I think back then in Sabah alone, there were no B girls around. I, I don't want to claim that I, I'm the first, I was the first B girl in KK, but I think, I guess people knew me for that back then in 2007 until 2011. Uh, even, People who I don't know, they suddenly know me by my, you know, my affiliations with uh, your your crew and also apart from training, I joined in, joined battles. I did put myself out there and express myself through dancing. I considered myself as a uh, brave lie in that sense, but I guess I I had that courage because I also had a a very supportive uh, team, a very supportive crew, and who who uh, which guided me. Yeah. All right. So, so b before we continue, uh, you said uh, my crew. Uh, it's actually our crew. So, just oh, to, yeah, yeah, it's our <laughs> crew. It's not my yeah. crew. <laughs> so, also, you mentioned that, uh, yeah, you you don't want to claim that you were the first uh, B girl in KK. I don't think you are. I'm sure there were a lot of other B girls before you. But one thing I did remember is that you did have a crew where all of them were B-girls. Unfortunately, I never really saw them outside of a school setting. Could you tell me more about that? Did I imagine this or 
was there really like an all B girl crew when you were starting out? And what happened to them? Actually, yeah, uh, we did. Um, now I just remembered. Yeah, um, I, I would like to call this group as aspiring B girls because for me, a definition of a B girl is you not only have the 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 intentions to become a B girl, but you also need to have at least the foundational skills of a B girl, like a top rock, a solid top rock, a solid uh, footwork. But for them, we were just starting out. They were just starting out. So I was I was the mentor for them. But what happened was, I guess it was because we did not have a proper space to train. We had a space to train, but it was costly. It was in a hall and we had to rent it and we don't have that. And as students back then, we had no money. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you guys rent rent a space, damn. Like, uh, I think even until now, I have never rented a space for training. Yeah. So, yeah, that was pretty. That's actually impressive that you guys actually tried to rent a space. How, how much did it cost to rent the place? I think it was... Back then, it was three ringgit per person. I know it doesn't sound expensive, but as students back then, uh, you know you, you you gotta understand yeah i mean like as students like three ringgit is your meal for the whole day in school it's basically not eating yeah yeah and also maybe the bus fee <laughs> bus fee to go <laughs> yeah. especially yeah especially if you you follow the bus yeah damn like okay i mean looking at it at that perspective yeah that is quite expensive for a student there were five of us but yeah it it, it did not sustain because of that you said you wanted to share something before we moved on to uh, the next experience yeah so i was i guess i was the first big girl that people knew and also the first one to to put herself out there it represents female empowerment yeah i mean i i agree uh once you started breaking i saw more big girls coming out to break and trying their best to beat you in fact i think even within our own circles there were some b girls who actually did go out to performances uh but even they didn't last as long as you did even though uh probably objectively they were more talented than you i guess that's why you're a pioneer and they're not right <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so the other one is bad experiences a few of the things were there were b boys looking down on me yeah i think they looked down on me because my moves were not sharp uh, or my moves were not clean and uh, it was not as clean as theirs so i guess that that was why they looked down on me and also because i i could not do any power moves maybe they have higher standards for b girls but but the thing was maybe either they have higher standards or they just look down on girls in general and and if they saw a b girl they would not they would not care to to uh, guide the the big girl. Instead, they they proceed they proceeded to undermine her. Maybe that was the mindset back then, and uh, I I was subjected to that, <laughs> but I did not care. I just trained. Another one was uh, my parents did not consent to what I uh, I was doing. I did these things behind their backs. I I understood why. It was because of the gender expectations. B b boying or breaking is a male dominated uh, sport so i kind of understand where they are coming from uh but i i was a rebel i guess i did not care i i went behind their backs and trained with you guys and also followed a lot of quite a few competitions despite me doing those things behind their backs the b-boying scene in kk or in or saba in general many of them knew me for uh being a big girl yeah, uh, one one thing that I remember w when we were breaking together is that you were quite popular. Almost everybody in the scene knew you, even from West Malaysia. A lot of b-boys have heard of you, uh, even the big crews. Even though you had like all these opportunities uh, coming to you, your parents still didn't know that you were breaking. That was something very interesting. Even if I look at it now, uh, I would say that I was rebellious for the things that I was passionate about. And also, I did not want the, the gender expectations to limit me even personally personally i i think uh i think it's healthy to be rebellious when you're younger depending on how it goes it teaches you that your parents don't know everything or your parents were right and you don't know everything so 
you being rebellious at that time, I think that was a good decision. And for everybody listening, although I don't, although I don't recommend it, if it's breaking wise, maybe maybe it's a good decision. But uh, anything else, uh, you know what? You have to be responsible. Because I don't want anybody. I, I don't want people to start an OnlyFans account because they yeah, think they're yeah, rebelling. Yeah, so true. that's not what yeah. I'm about. So we're not responsible, yeah. If it's breaking, yeah, maybe you know what we we can. You know, we have that empathy. But if you say that you want a rebel instead of an OnlyFans <laughs> account, you know what? Maybe that's not such a good idea. Yeah. During your time as a B girl, you were quite well known in the scene. So, could you walk us through your journey and、uh, what you went through during this time? When I started, I did not know that it's not that I did not know, but I never bothered that th- this activity was a male-dominated activity. Yeah, it did not bother bother me, and also because I did not have a conception of、uh, gender expectations. I did not learn that concept. I just、uh, participated in competitions. I I mingled with people, and then slowly there were other big girls, you know, like from Tenom. Oh yeah, and I and I wanted to try out. Okay, this one in terms of the skills that I learned lah. I I was not interested in power moves, so I, I was interested in more to styles, you know, freezes and blow ups. There there was this one move that I thought I could never do it. You know, for you maybe it was a, a simple move, but for me it was difficult. What what was it called? Blow up ah, blow up elbow freeze. That was for me. Okay, that was my most. Our highest achievement ever, yeah. And then I learned, I learned uh, uh, sets from you. Yeah, you you taught me a few of the sets because I had to admit that I was not creative. <laughs> I was not creative in my, you know, my especially my footwork. I was not creative. Maybe I my top rock it was okay, but my footwork I really had no idea how to go about, you know, like making it more stylish or entertaining. You know,、uh, you you taught me three sets, I think. Yeah, I still remember how it looked. Like because I had videos of them, but I cannot do them anymore. <laughs> yeah, so that was back in 2010 and 2011. And then I unintentionally stopped. Unintentionally, I did not have any intentions to stop. You know, because ah,、uh, you know, I was just going with the flow. What do you think about the B girl scene, and、uh, how can it improve, in your opinion? Okay, for now, I'm not sure how the B girling scene is, especially in Sabah. But I know that in Sabah, when it comes to events such as this, we are always being left behind. When I look back at my videos, I still have them. My Luhe, I still keep them. I the standard was low. I think I could have done better if I set a higher standard for myself. But because back then I my mindset was more local rather than global. Because I only thought of okay Sabah only in Sabah. Sabah, Sabah, Sabah. Okay, in, and and back then in Sabah and also probably now there were no other big girls who have put herself out there. Maybe there was one. I think the new generation, but the standard was low. I looked at my girls; they were not that sharp and clean. <laughs> so I think yeah, the mindset we have to change. We have to think big. Look at big girling at a global scale, and also on top of that, we have、uh, Olympics. We have we are breaking in Olympics in 2024 for the big girls, aspiring big girls who want to go global. They have to think big rather than just because in Sabah we have no or maybe lacking big girls. That doesn't mean you cannot put yourself at a higher standard. Because back then, my mistake, I think, my, I think, as I recall, my mistake was I was too complacent. Yeah, I was too complacent, saying that oh, I had nobody to, nobody to compete with、uh, at the local scale. And also, even though I have like、uh, inspiration such as Big Girl Ace from Extreme Crew, because at that time there was no possibility that I can ever meet up with her or train with her at that time. Yeah, but right now I think there are possibilities. Like for example, maybe a famous Big Girl somewhere they will come in Sabah and train with you. You have to aim higher. Don't just think locally. To be fair, it's because you were that way because you didn't really have a bar in KK.、Uh, you were the one setting the bar because you were the only, almost the only big girl who was brave enough to compete seriously. You were the only big girl who wasn't shy to go、uh, into a solo competition. Even I don't think it's your fault that there was no bar at the time because you were building it. Next question:、uh, Was it tough participating in? An activity that's dominated and filled with aggressive men. 
What was your experience? I I did not experience any difficulties because uh, because I had a, a very supportive team, a very, very supportive crew. So it did, it was not hard for me. I think what makes breaking hard is not not just the learning of the skills, but also the people around you, your teammates. You know, either they're toxic or supportive. Yeah, that's what makes I think you know our mental health matters. So mental health also influences how you motivate yourself in doing your passion. So in this context is your team is one of the primary motivators for you to look at beguiling as easy. Easy as in, I mean, the skills are hard because you need practice, but without good uh, support system, how are you able to practice even? You get what I mean? And unlike other other crews where I heard that they're quite toxic with one another. So if there was a big girl in that group, I don't think she will she will have the motivation because it's already a male dominated activity. And then the members, they're not uh, providing any support. So how is she going to develop herself? in terms of beguiling. For me personally, it was not difficult because I had a good support system. I had a, a supportive crew. Yeah. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. So how do you actually navigate romantic relationships as a B-girl? I suspect that it wasn't easy because especially since you said uh, we, you already train with guys 99% of the time. Do you have any specific stories you want to share? Okay, so this guy, he was not a b-boy, he was an ordinary ordinary guy lah. Okay, so, you know, being in a relationship, you have to be honest with honest with your partner. So I did that. I told him that I was part of this crew and I always train with these guys. In the end, he broke up with me. It was because I was active in b-boying. I was a b-girl and he did not like that I was always with men. I was training with men. Uh, did you have any experiences dating a, a b-boy? Yes. And that one was, despite him being a b-boy, uh, he he discouraged me from you know training, wanting to be a big girl, maybe because he was also he was also influenced by that kind of sexism lah. For those who are listening, uh, you might think this is a bit dramatic, but keep in mind we were 18, we were young, so a lot of our relationships uh, <laughs> at that age probably more dramatic than mm-hmm, it is right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. What was it like uh, training and competing with us? I, I know we've mentioned it before, but you know, anything specific you'd like to uh, highlight or reiterate about training with the crew, you know, with us in particular? Mm, okay, so if I remember cl- clearly, I, I did not have that like wanting to beat you guys, like wanting to be better than you guys because the the bar was slow lah, and that, that was one of the reasons. And I could have, you know, if I if I think about it now, it's I should have been more competitive with you guys, you know, because you guys had the the skills. I could have done better, you know, because you guys, I, I'm already with, I was already with you guys, but then I did not take the opportunity to be to compete with you guys. For our listeners, something interesting that you guys would probably want to know is that earlier in our breaking life. Zell was much, much better than me in terms of dancing, in terms of musicality, in terms of style. Her top rocks were so much better than mine. If you watch older videos, you would be you would be in tears laughing at how my how horrible my top rocks were. At, at that moment in time, most of my focus was trying to develop a uh, a style for myself. When I thought of competing, I never thought about competing with the other guys in terms of top rock and footwork because everyone else was doing power. So personally, I was competing with Zell. So every time I dance, I was always thinking, how can I beat Zell? And because she was like so far ahead of me and uh, it was so frustrating that I could not beat her i couldn't understand why i couldn't look as good as her when i was dancing yeah if i could tell my past self my active big girl self i would tell her that you need to compete with these guys that's what i would tell my i would tell my old self looking back how do you think breaking has affected your personality today is is it a result of breaking well what i noticed is in my personal life 
I'm always a part of something that sparks change or a part of something different. Previously, it was unintentional. Previously, I I just wanted to join, have fun, and challenge myself. But for now, it's more intentional. I wanted to be a part of of organizations that spark change. Previously, I express I put myself out there by expressing expressing myself through dance. But for now, I'm expressing myself through advocating for a cause. There are similarities and also there are differences. The I think the differences is because it's a different domain. But the similarities is because I was and am challenging status quo. For all those aspiring big girls out there, even though there are big girls who has stopped because of personal commitments, don't view that as oh, I'm 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 gonna quit anyway because I'm gonna have kids and I'm gonna get married. I'm gonna quit anyway. While you're still young, while you still have the energy, and while you still don't have those types of commitments, you have to just start. If you are passionate about it, you want to challenge yourself. You focus on the present. Don't focus too much on the future. Focus on the present and what you can do right now. So don't be discouraged by the the big girls who have quit. You know, the big girls who have achieved a lot, but in the end quit. They have different pathways. You have a different pathway. So. You do you. Of course, you need a a very good support system as well. Yeah. All right. I think that's a good place to end. Thank you for listening, and let's hope another podcast happens soon. Bye, Bye guys.